Hey guys, I'm gonna to try to capture some of what I'm doing here on this box bill. This is the top that I got cut out. Let me pause this right quick on the television. Yeah, so I got the top cut out of the, the enclosure right now. I got the speaker moved. There's nothing in there. The speaker's actually sitting right here. And what I have on my sitting, got my fan sitting on, is actually the addition that's gonna go on it. I'm close up for you guys. It's hollow. I'm thinking about putting some bracing in there, but I think I'm gonna skip out on it. I'm not gonna do it. So that's pretty much what it looks like right now. And it's gonna go to the side, well, on top, in this case, on, on top of that. Okay guys, so I got the table saw out because one thing that's going to have to be done before we actually attach this to this is that we're going to have to, or it would be best to, go ahead and cut the PVC pipe in order to, um, to get the ports set up. I want the ports set up before I actually go ahead and do this because once you get this glued to this, you're done. You know, you're going to catch hell trying to put an 18 inch port, two of them, through that little hole that we cut in the other side of that. In case you guys don't remember, you ain't gonna be able to do that because that, that port in length itself is only about, I say about six inches or so. So do yourself a favor, cut, get the ports cut before, get them installed before you even, um, before you even attach this to this because that'll make your life a whole lot easier. That's what I'm doing, I got the table so out. I am a one-man team, so I won't be showing you guys that, but just know that with movie magic, this is going to be done in just a few seconds. All right, guys, please excuse the fan in the background, but it's hot as shit up in here, and uh, yeah, uh, I need my fan. <laughs> but anyway, as you guys can see, I do have the port cut out. I did two of these. Uh, what you're looking at here is the B-52 uh, port I bought from Parts Express about, I don't know, six months or so ago. I uh, picked these guys up from very, very cheap, believe it or not. This is a flared port. This thing is three inches by five inches. I think the flare itself is around five and a quarter from uh, the diameter of it. It's five and a quarter inches. If you guys are wondering about the flare, this is a three inch port again. What I did, I went to um, a big box store and I got a three inch pipe and I got three inch couplers as well. So these are five uh, inches in, in length. So that give me 10 inches in total, eight inches of pipe and the couplers just work out perfectly. I don't even think that I'm going to, uh, what I wanted to be able to do uh, in the event that I get rid of this box or come up with a new design or whatever, was to be able to take this out and actually have it um, easily, not only um, easily to be able to take it out, but also be able to reuse it if I wanted to. So I'm not going to be gluing these. I know some people are going to go against not gluing them, but I'm not going to be gluing these. What I'm going to be doing with them actually is just taping them up. There is a little bit of play. When I say a little bit of play, I mean like maybe a 32nd of an inch of play in, in between the opening of the coupler and the, uh, the, the three inch tubing itself. So I think what I'm going to do is get like some fuzzy tape and put it on there and just slide it snug in there and then just wrap the whole thing with like duct tape. I think that's that's the route that I'm going to go with it. Uh, but for right now, this is where I'm at. I got to do another one of these and I'll get back with you guys in a minute. 
For all the guys out there who didn't know what I was referencing when I said fuzzy tape, I was talking about the Tesla tape right here that you see on stock harnesses, wiring, and things of that nature. Wait a minute, let me turn this television down right quick. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, so this is what I was talking about right here. This is Tesla tape. And this stuff worked work wonders for, like, cutting out on vibrations and things like that. So I did do a test fit. I just went around a lip of it, and I did do a test fit, and it's, it fits very snug up in there. I think I'm going to bring it down another strip, which is about an inch or so, and I'm going to do that one, and the one on the floor has to be done as well. So that's where I'm at. All right, so one thing I want to point out to you guys, if you do decide to go with this method and use a Tesla tape, I want you to know that uh, this, Tesla, this Tesla tape stuff really, really snugs this up. I mean, really snugs this up. Um, I don't even think this thing needs to be taped. It's just that, that put together. Uh, of course, it's a, it was a tight fit. I had to like stand over it, kind of like, I literally had to do this because once I measured it, it was like an inch and a half longer than what it's supposed to be, which let me know it wasn't snug. It wasn't it wasn't coupling uh, snugly enough. It wasn't flush on the inside. So I literally had to put two hands on either side of it and push it back down to measurement. I don't think this is going anywhere. I'm still going to tape it, but I don't, I really, honestly, I don't think it needs it. This thing is solid just like this, but, you know, acoustics have a funny way of bending things, you understand? We don't see it with the naked eye, but it has a funny way of bending things and, and vibrating things loose. And even though that's what Tesla tape was made for, to keep down on uh, acoustic interferences from, like, vibrating cables or within, like, uh, speaker enclosures, uh, underneath the wiring inside of vehicles and stuff... Uh, well, that's one thing it was made for, but I, I don't, I don't think it'll hold up to what this sub is going to be putting out. Um, I don't, I don't think the engineer in me don't. I, I know better not to tape this up. So, but to be honest with you, just the the pull strength of it, the pull test. I'm gonna catch hell trying to pull this thing apart. I may have to like plant a foot on either side of it and yank it up. That's that's how tight it is right now. But enough for that. I just wanted to let you know Tesla tape works. All right, guys. Again, I want to apologize uh, for the fan noise. It's very hot out here, and I'm <laughs> I'm sweating my ass off. But um, one thing I want to point out about what I just had to do to the porch right here, uh, I did go ahead and put the duct tape on it. I am going to be wrapping this in the center. These center pieces right here, I'm going to be wrapping that with sound deadener. But for right now, what I want to point out is that the the chamber right here is not as wide as the port or flare. You see that? The, the, the flare of the port actually goes past. Now, as far as flush mounting, this is going to be all right because it's just going to look like one piece. So this is going to fit perfectly on there when it's connected over here to this guy over here. However, on the internals of it, you got to keep in mind that it's the same way. So it actually goes over that lip somewhat, the same as over here. So you got to compensate for that when you come down here on the inside. Because that these lips are going to rub on the walls here, the same as they are here. You're still going to have them rubbing. Well, that line is going to go across that line. So to compensate for that and, and not have the port sitting at some skewed angle, what I did was, I'm going to twist it from up here and turn it around, is that I had to, to use the sander to, I could have used the table saw, but they're in there now. There's no taking them out at this point. So I used the uh, sander to go ahead and flatten that so that it can sit well, actually, right now, so that it can rest naturally in there without being at some weird angle. And as you guys can see, I did the same thing over there. And no, they do not touch. I wanted to make sure I take off enough where they don't actually touch the back of it. Or in this in this case, that's going to be a side wall. I did not want them touching that side wall 
So what I did was I took enough off so whereas I can put some cushion, some type of padding underneath there and maybe sound dead in that as well. So if you know if any vibration were to come through, it wouldn't be noticeable at all. Uh, but I'm going to be mounting this thing down pretty tightly. It's going to be secured. And, um, yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. I'll give you guys an update in a second. All right, guys, so this is all right, guys. So this is what we're working with. Um, I do have them in here temporarily. When I say temporarily, what I'm talking about is, um, uh, first of all, let me let me show you guys what I did down here. Uh, this is weather strip. This is what I had when I tested when I first tested this box. Uh, one side was actually uh, removable, and I had it in there doing a sound test with this. This is the sticky side. And this is just the smooth side. This is this is something you can pick up at any of your big box stores. Walmart carry this. This is weather stripping. Um, so what I did for it down here, I showed you guys earlier that I made that end down here flat. One of the, the tips of it flat. I put the weather stripping in there, which is sticky side, one sticky side, and then I just put the uh, the duct tape on top of it just to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. There's, there's going to be a lot of vibration going on inside of here. You don't want that going anywhere. I am going to be uh, tying these guys down to that to the bottom, but not right now. I'm going to go ahead and do some sound deadening as well. But before I get to that, I want to show you guys that I, what I did here was um, I used a hot glue gun. I had this thing for a while, a little hot glue gun, and just went around the edges, plant those guys in place. I'm going to be drilling some screws in here later on, but I, I want to hold them in place so I can do the underside of it too. This is not for securing the port. This is just for pretty much sealing it making sure that I get an airtight seal underneath. I'm going to show you guys why. I'm going to try to get this flip. I'm going to flip this right, right quick. Hold on. Okay, so I have it flipped. And as you guys can see, that one there is still loose. And I knew it was going to do that. The glue is good for smaller applications like a speaker like this, if you want to port that, which is a bookshelf speaker, then yeah, you can you could you could use glue on a port for something like that because the uh, pressure that it's going to create is not going to be anything um, in comparison to this thing right here. This thing has 90 millimeters of X Mac peak to peak. You don't want to take chances on securing this with just hobby glue. But what I am going to be doing um, is taking the bottom of this, and I don't have taking the bottom of these guys right here on the underside of them, and I'm going to be filling that with glue. Okay? So, sorry about that, guys. So what I'm going to be doing is filling those cavities with glue just to ensure a tight feel, a tight seal. And I know some of you guys are probably wondering, well, you got weather stripping. Why not use the weather stripping? Because of the vibration that's going to be going on inside of this thing, I don't want to take a chance of this losing adhesion due to vibration and falling into the into the to this and just doing nothing, you know, losing my seal. I will use glue, uh, but glue is going to take too long. Traditional glue anyway is going to take too long. But this stuff here sits pretty pretty quickly and it does what it's supposed to it worked well with glue, with, wood, with wood so i'm going to be using this to fill those cavities and i'll get back with you guys once i do that all right guys there we go and uh yeah i, I did not measure these and as you guys can see they're not symmetrical especially on this side right here i should have measured them but I did want three over here, three over here. And hopefully when I paint, I'm going to paint these black. Hopefully when, <laughs> hopefully when I paint them black, they don't take away too much from the um, the design. I may leave it like that, to be honest with you, because then they'll actually match the, um, the setup of the sub. Because the sub is going to be black with chrome screws. So maybe leaving this black with, no, I think I'm going to make it all black. 
Yeah, I don't like I don't like the way it looks right now, but um, we'll see once we get it mounted what it looked like. But it doesn't look like it did in my head. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't look the same as it did in my brain. But we'll see. We'll we'll see. But right now, this is it, and I'm going to be mounting it to the side of that in a minute. So, be back with you guys. All right, guys. So um, I got this thing in like I wanted it. I uh, still haven't put the uh, sound deadener on here, but I am about to get ready to wrap them. But before I wrap them, which I'm not going to show you guys, I mean, you know what sound deadener look like. Uh, what I wanted to share with you guys was um, what I ended up doing here. I went ahead and I went ahead and caulk, caulked the the, uh, the box. It did have a few leaks in it. Uh, I did not use clamps all the way around when I put this thing together, and that's what it happened. That's what the clamps are for. The clamps are to make sure that the wood is pressing wood to wood and no air gaps in between. Uh, but when you don't when you don't use clamps, you run the risk of having air bubbles there, and of course, air bubbles would uh, create leakage because I mean, there the wood is not touching, right? So you want the the wood glue to sink into the wood and for the wood to touch so they can cure together. But anyway, um, so that's what the caulk is for. The caulk is to seal it off. It is sealed off. Um, and right here, what I did at the bottom of this, wait a minute, let me get it, I gotta flip it. What I what I did at the bottom of it is that I uh, went ahead and secured these pads right here. These are cushions. This pads right here, very, very soft um, pads that I made with the uh, the uh, weather stripping and I went ahead and secured it with a screw right here so that will not vibrate it's, it's, it's against this pad but not pressing down to the board it's about midway with this screw very very secure very tough snug it ain't going nowhere and for my, to prevent air leakage under here what I did was I went ahead and secured it with glue under here I'm going to be putting a little bit of caulk in there as well but for right now, it's, it's like I wanted it. Um, this chamber is going to serve me well. This do bring the tuning a little bit lower than I expected because now the approximate uh, volume of the box is going to be closer to four cubic feet. A lot bigger than I wanted it, but that's what the manufacturer wanted. So still a short box in general. Four cubic feet ain't bad. This is actually what the sixth order was, but um, a little bit different in dimensions. So it fits in the in the trunk exactly the way I wanted it to. But enough yapping, I'm gonna go ahead and secure this thing and I'll show you guys what it looked like once it's actually secured to the box. Okay, so that's, that, that she go right there. Y'all, she, um, she glued up ready to go, but I'm gonna tell y'all what I almost did. I almost glued this thing shut without applying the kill mat i almost did that i was in a rush man trying to get this thing finished uh the glue still wet and everything i was going to plant it to the side right here and, and clamp and i i thought about it i said damn i didn't even put the sound dead on the porch <laughs> so uh yeah i just wanted to let y'all know I'm, I'm super anxious about getting this here done and uh seeing what you guys think about it but for right now enough yapping I'm going to go ahead and get this here done. 